Saturn. They call me the maintenance evangelist. We're here for another edition of Skill TV at the European Maintenance Conference in Brussels, Belgium. As we've been discussing all week, uh, companies have some serious challenges that they have to confront. They have to confront uh, downtime, they have to confront energy loss, they have to manage their costs and increase their productivity and profitability. We've uncovered some uh, interesting groups that can actually contribute and, and resolve some of those challenges. And I uh, happen to uh, uncover a gentleman here from the United States that's over here in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, Doug, uh, uh, glad you could come over and uh, thanks, thanks for giving us some time today. My, my pleasure. Uh, a little bit about who we are and, and what we do. Uh, our company, UE Systems, has been manufacturing and, and supporting ultrasonic test equipment since 1973. Uh, ultrasonics uh, is an interesting technology. It's, it started out as a, a very simple search and locate sort of troubleshooting tool to, back in the 70s and 80s to locate things like compressed air leaks and faulty steam traps. Um, as the, the maintenance and reliability market Marketplace became more and more educated, the, the applications for ultrasound started to expand into things like condition monitoring of bearings, uh, condition-based lubrication programs, and, and much more on the mechanical side of things. Well, it's interesting, as, as time goes on, history has a tendency to repeat itself, and here we are back in, in the 2000s, and the whole energy crunch has started to make people open their eyes and think about how these different technologies can impact energy management programs as well as, as condition monitoring and rotating equipment programs. So ultrasound, uh, to make things very simple, is a high-frequency translator. It takes sounds above our threshold of hearing as human beings, and it converts them into a low-frequency sound that we can listen to, for example, a compressed air leak, or friction that's produced from rotating equipment. A lot of friction or a little bit of friction. So by taking this high frequency sound and converting it into low frequency, it gives an inspector or an operator the ability to not just listen to the received sounds, but also by using advanced digital technology, we're able to look at dB levels over time. This gives us the ability to look at increases in the sound levels. We can also take that output via a compact flash card and record those received signals to put into software, which I'll discuss in just a moment, that allows us to document what we're hearing and what we're finding, and also do some simple analyzing of the sounds that are received. Three major applications for ultrasound. One, on the energy management side of things, is any type of compressed gas, whether that be compressed air, in the, in the example with my bottle, with a large leak. Not only are we able to hear it, but with advanced ultrasonic technology now, we're not just locating the leak and fixing it. We're locating it, measuring the CFM coming from that leak so we can What's attach a CFM? A CFM is a cubic feet per minute of volume of air that's leaking from a specific pit. That allows us to attach a dollar figure to the type of losses we have to do our cost analysis and justify further inspections. And I understand that a quarter inch compressed air leak over a course of a year, it can cost what? Fifty, sixty, fifty to sixty thousand dollars translated into euros, thirty to forty thousand euros over the course of a of a year's time with that leak left unattended. So it's truly an amazing technology in the sense that that instrumentation in ultrasonics ranges anywhere from a few thousand dollars to a maximum of about ten thousand. And if you plug one leak, your cost payback is, is it almost instantaneous. We're finding customers can get a payback on this technology in a matter of days by doing an ultrasonic circuit. That's phenomenal. Not only limited to the compressed air, where much of the cost is, is brought up because of your producing it with compressors, but also specialty gases that plants are buying for many other processes. Here we have something as simple as a butane lighter. I'm able to locate less than one PSI of leakage. isolate exactly where that leak is coming from. 
Another application for ultrasound that is more on the condition monitoring side of things is bearing testing. By simply changing the head of an ultrasonic translator, I can put a contact probe in, whether I want to use this in a contact mode or use it in a magnetic mode for a little more consistency. I can then measure the decibels and record the sounds over time. This enables me to make decisions based on the increase in decibels of whether I need to take further action. For example, an increase in eight decibels, which is typically the standard in industry, over a baseline reading is an indication that we probably need to lubricate rather than time-based lubrication, which many times gives you the ability to go out there on a time basis and put the grease into the bearings. This enables people to end up over-lubricating many of their bearings. By applying the ultrasonic technology, it lets us take it to the next level and lubricate just when that bearing needs it. So one end is lubrication, the second is slow speed bearing monitoring. Slow speed bearing monitoring is available with vibration analysis, but the only drawback to that is it usually has to be done in higher resolution, hence the inspection time is longer. Many companies are using ultrasonic technology to sort out hundreds of bearings and decide where to do further analysis. So I can take that received reading, I can put, plug it into my, my database, and I can watch it over time. Once I've seen an increase, then I look at a very simple analysis and I can compare a good bearing to a bad bearing. What I'm looking for, an increase in amplitude typically indicates the need for lubrication. An increase in amplitude accompanied by distinctive fault frequency tells me lubrication isn't going to bring it back. What I need then and what I'm seeing is actual impact or bearing faults. So I'm going to need to employ vibration analysis to determine exactly why those faults are there and do a little more root cause analysis. I'm now going to take just a minute and demonstrate. 15 seconds. Okay, now go ahead and talk. Okay, now that I've gone ahead and taken readings, how do I download those readings into the computer? I simply take a compact flash card, which I can insert into my PCMCIA slot. I download my readings into my computer software. Now, my software really serves two purposes. One, it lets me take a historical data and take months worth of readings and look at a history of a particular bearing or a particular gearbox or a particular point. That history is easily translated over into a chart that lets us set alarm levels and look for anomalies or increases in the decibel levels, Excuse which will indicate different things.